Welcome to Book Miss. This is the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. So, today's video is going to be a special one. And as you all know, I have a parrot who cannot be quiet today. But be that as it may, I was having a conversation with Rhonda on Instagram and she posted a book she was using for, excuse me. Okay, bird has been relocated downstairs. So, back to the conversation. I made a comment on Rhonda's post and I will link it down below. And this is the book she was referencing. Cannot recall the name of it to save my life at the moment. I apologize, Rhonda. Um, and she gave me the idea for this video. And I'm very glad she did because it's, it's very me. It combines the two things I love in life. And it's a very visual reminder of the importance of both things. So Rhonda is the writer of the Molly Chase series. The first book is In Pieces. The second book is Adrift. I will link my reviews for both of these books in the description box down below. These are historical fiction. They are set in 1793, I say that and I, my brain is telling me that's the wrong date, Boston and so post-revolutionary war America. Yeah, 1793 is right. And they are fabulous. Rhonda has a chat, has a channel on YouTube. I will link it in the description box as well. And she reads samples from the books and they are fabulous. And the first chapter of In Pieces will grab you and not let go. These are full of emotions and political intrigue and family and romance to some extent. And just they're, they're absolutely just wonderful books. So the reason for this video is Rhonda suggested I talk about the difference between something that is handcrafted versus machine crafted. And machine crafted is much more common these days, unfortunately, and it is easy and cheap to replicate and it all looks identical and there is no deviation versus handcrafted, which is usually has a mistake, at least one, and no one else in the world may ever know, but the person who did it certainly does, even if they can't find it in the finished product. It has a history that spans a thousand plus years, two thousand plus years. The story of William the Conqueror from the is told in the Bayou Tapestry, and that was stitched by women. And the ability and, and stitching obviously goes back much further than the Bayou Tapestry. And stitching in particular is considered a woman's craft, even though men do it all the time these days. And I find it very condescending when the course of discussion tends to indicate that women are left out of history or women have no part in it and the story is only told by men 
That is not true. And how do we know this? Through textiles. Sewing, needlepoint, embroidery, cross stitch, knitting, crochet, all the things were always considered women's work. And who do you think designed those patterns? And who do you think stitched those patterns? And who told those stories that went into those pieces? Women. So women are not forgotten. They do not sit on the sidelines of history and let simply let men tell the story. That has never been true. It is certainly not the representation of history we have in physical format. And I, unfortunately, like many things that we do by hand, be it cursive handwriting or learning to sew or candle making or cross stitch, aren't being passed on to current and future generations. And the world is losing something valuable and important and necessary. The ability to sew, and I, I, I mean more than just sew on a button, is what drove civilization forward. If you couldn't figure out how to sew together two pieces of fur to stay warm, you didn't survive. And we're losing that, and that is scary. It is, it is scary. So today I thought I would share some family pieces. There's, they're mostly from my family. We have very little from Dave's. But what we do have from Dave's is beautiful. And we need to get it framed this year because it's starting to take some damage. But I'll show you that in a minute. So first up would be the quilt my great grandmother, may God rest her soul. I'm not sure if this is crochet or knit. I don't do either one of those. I'm pretty sure it's crochet. Yeah, I'm positive it's crochet. Um, made for me when I was young. I think I got this when I was 10 or 11. So it's four decades old, if not older. And I still have it and it still sits in my closet. And every time I come across it or I pack it because we move, I think of her and it makes me smile. And does it get a lot of use these days? No. Am I ever going to get rid of it? No. It's a piece of her. Therefore, it's a piece of me. Why would I ever get rid of it? So here's a small portion of it. I've used this since I got it. It's twin size, so there's no twin mattresses in our house anymore, but I, I love this and it's part of her and it's, it's irreplaceable. She stitched this for me because she loved me. She didn't go to the store and buy a blanket. She, she put a part of herself into each stitch. So, it's beautiful. Next up is a piece from Dave's great-grandmother. I know nothing more about that, th about this piece than that. Um, it was handed down to us in the condition in which we find it today. I need to get it framed. It is very tight on this piece of, it's cotton. I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but it's beautiful. It is, it's amazing. Um, some of the threads are starting to pull, but you know, his great grandmother stitched this. His mother didn't. That's all we have of, of his family. It, uh, It's beautiful and the colors will go in our house nicely. And she did a fabulous job 
and it's incredibly meticulous. And I want to preserve this piece of his history. It's, you know, I don't know the story behind it. I don't know that he knows the story behind it. His parents have both passed away. They weren't forthcoming with details when they were alive. So, what we are left with is a stitched piece of fabric and, and no, no backstory. I will take the stitched piece of fabric with no backstory because it's better than nothing. But it's, it's very sad at the same time. So, next up is the stuff from my mom. And my mom has a much broader skill set than me. She needle points, or she did. She now has macular degeneration, so she can't do much anymore. Um, she needle pointed. She embroidered. She knits. She crocheted. And I don't do any of those things. But she also doesn't cross stitch and I do, so that's okay. And this is just one example from her in the house. We have many blankets she has crocheted. In fact, last year she crocheted a huge blanket for me and a huge blanket for Dave. And by huge, I mean they're 13 by 13 feet. And it's the year of our birth and they're, they're massive and they probably weigh 20 pounds a piece. Needless to say, I didn't dig those out today. Um, she has stitched many pieces for us for the walls. We have flamingos from our marriage. We have, um, I have Holly Hobby from when I was a kid. I have bears, so, you know, I have a piece from when I graduated from graduate school. There's a wide variety. But for today, I picked this one. It sits on our mantle. It's a serving tray. It is a collection of four crosses. And this was when we moved out of our house in Arizona and into the RV and traveled for three years. We obviously took everything my mother did for us and for me. But this one is the only one that we displayed the entire time we were traveling. And as you can tell, the Velcro tabs are still on the back. It's a memento, as a memento of that. So, it's always been important and again it's not something I'm I, I, I can fathom ever parting with it's part of me it is part of my mother so those are some family pieces and now um, oh let me set that down okay so everything else is a work in progress for me, or by me, for other people, with the exception of two of the three pieces today. So, so the first piece is going to be for Dave and I. Um, I'm stitching it for our 20th wedding anniversary, which is in 2024. And here is what the pattern will look like when it's completed. And I am stitching it on the called for fabric. However, I, being me, have changed all the floss away from to silk from cotton. And this is what it currently looks like. It's hard to see, but this is the flamingo's beak. Um, I think that, yeah, that's right. And why does it look like it's really off center? Um, 
It's not. Um, like I said, this one is just for Dave and I, and it isn't something I'm stitching for someone else. It isn't something that would be meaningful to anybody else, but for us, it is very meaningful, and it is... He doesn't know I'm doing it. He knows I own the pattern. He doesn't know I'm doing it for anniversary. And it will look beautiful in our bedroom. And or even out here in the living room. So I need to start stitching at it on a more frequent basis so it gets done by October. Okay, so next up would be the piece I had been working on since I was in college, early in college, so I'm not sure when this pattern has come out. I know I've purchased it at least three times and my latest copy was republished in 2001. <laughs> it has traveled across the country with us. It has been put away for years. It comes back out. However, I am trying to get it finished by the end of the year. I don't get it finished by the end of the year, which is less than a month away now. I will finish it very early in 2024. And it will be framed and put in my house because it is definitely a legacy piece for me. It is definitely a piece that means something to me because I made a point to carry it across the country for years and it's moved houses, it's moved coasts. It's just time to get it done. So here's what it will look like when it's finished. And the reason this one has made it into this video, and this is the difference between something that is machine stitched and something that is stitched by hand, is that this one has mementos like of dogs and cats we have loved in the past, you know, they, they have fur on the fabric itself. There's fur interwoven in the stitching. And while that will probably drive a lot of pure stitchers insane, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. It means that those animals that I have loved and who are no longer with us, or who are calmly sleeping on sofas next to me as I speak are forever a part of this piece and a part of me and a part of the stitching and that has been true throughout history so I am glad that there are mementos of those I have loved and they forever will be part of this so I don't have a problem with that. So here is, it's too big to fit completely in frame. So here's where it currently stands. Minus back stitching, which is outlining if you don't stitch. The bottom half is complete. So I just need to finish the top half, which isn't that much stitching. It's a matter of, you know, putting on an audio book sitting down and making a concerted effort to stitch which I'm going to make time to do even if reading suffers a little bit this is important for me to finish I will get this one framed when it's done I will share that with you because I, I, undoubtedly my joy will know no bounds when that's done um and it'll sit in the house or hang on the wall. So that is Liberty Angel. So um, I have two versions of the prayer card. I probably have more, to be honest. Um, I have the modern version and I've ha I have the version that's been in my mass missile I've had since my first Holy Communion back in 1975 and so this is my original 
and this is the modern and uh, they're the same and they're not they're just they're not um, I have a definite preference that's going to be very obvious here in a minute so I can't remember if I showed you the, the pattern this is the pattern it's not going to be a difficult stitch I have stitched this before for another couple who was having their first child I stitched it back in grad school at the end of grad school as you know we were taking finals and studying for our profession exam and I that stitched up quickly and easily and it wasn't a problem this one however is a problem I am changing it up because I do not like the way it is stitching so this is where it currently is and it will not look like this when I'm done so I am changing up the hair and the skin tones to match the family that is getting it for their child and I'm fine with that my problem is is that the you probably can't even see this on on screen there is so many color changes that make no sense in her dress and do not match the prayer card I grew up with so I am changing the colors to fit this versus this. Would either be acceptable? Absolutely. Do I have a preference? Absolutely. Will I make every effort when we gift this to find this version of the prayer card to gift with it? Yes. Will I settle for this one? Yes. But it's not my it's not my choice. Um, this this is one of those highly personal stitches that will hopefully follow said child throughout their life, and is something they can pass on to their children, and. It's easy to adapt patterns to fit for whom you're stitching and it makes for a much more personalized final product than something you could go out and purchase that, you know, wouldn't be so personalized. It wouldn't be so meaningful. So that is just a... So that is just a broad overview of some examples in our house that we see every day that I'm stitching that have been meaningful for us that stretch back generations and I think they're important and I think we're losing that as a society and I think that that loss of skill and craft and love letter to the future is beyond sad it is it's tragic and it's irreparable harm the inability to sew the inability to tell a story through artistic medium done by hand is is what makes us human it's it's what differentiates us from everything else and we all don't have the same artistic gifts we all have different artistic gifts but if you make something by hand or you cook something or you write a love letter that is much more meaningful 
than something you run out to the store, pick up, wrap up, and deliver. At least it is for me. So I have hoped you have liked this video. I hope you have gotten a glimpse into our life. Please pick up Rhonda's books and read them. They are wonderful. I am very much looking forward to Molly Chase number three this year in 2024. <clears throat> and please leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and I will see you here next time.